Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at two different knives from um, Hogue. And I'm sure most of you guys have heard of Hogue, whether you're into knives or not, but Hogue has been in the around for a long time. Um, they make, you know, aftermarket parts for, uh, you know, firearms and so forth. I've got Hogue grips on, uh, on my AK. Um, I had to do a lot of Dremel work to get that thing to fit. It was a pain in the A, but totally worth it. Um, so anyways, you know, in this video, I'm going to ramble a lot. These knives, they're okay, but really the story is what Hogue is capable of doing and the quality levels that they're currently doing it at. So this video is going to be kind of rambly. Um, I also want to state that uh, these two are on loan from Blade HQ. And Zach from Blade HQ, if you guys seen the Knife Banter videos, he went down to the Hogue factory, I think it's in Nevada, uh, did a tour, did a video, did a road trip, and that video will be uploading to YouTube on um, May 29th, 2018. So uh, if you guys are seeing this, definitely go check that video out. Once that's released, I'll link that in the description box below. And of course, I'll put links to these two models um, as far as the Blade HQ pages in the description block, uh, box below as well. So let's get into it. So we've got two different models here. And, you know, when Hogue first came on the scene, um, as far as making knives, I my initial reaction was, oh joy, another fire manufacturer who's going to make, who licensed their, their brand, um, and they're not a fire manufacturer, another firearm accessory, someone in the firearm industry who has licensed their name to... Um, to some overseas company making junky knives and you guys have seen this with like Smith and Wesson and a few other companies um, you know they're basically pumping out crummy knives and they just have the Smith and Wesson logo on it so when I first saw these knives that was my you know gut reaction that oh joy another one subpar knives but then I started hearing really good things about the quality and reading more looking at pictures looking at videos and I was thinking okay there might be something here and um, I finally got to handle some of these either down at Blade HQ or one of the knife shows. And I was really impressed with the quality of them. Um, you know, they came out the gate and just really high quality stuff right off the bat. These two are no exception. And the thing that's really interesting is hoax potential. I think the thing that's holding them back right now is just that they have not come out with a design that has wowed people or really taken hold. And there are a lot of companies, um, you know, where basically the company doesn't really take off until that one design hits. So, um, you know, just some some noteworthy ones are going to be like, you know, Spider Co. and the Paramilitary 2, um, the Kershaw brand and things like the Dividend, um, the Spider Co. Native, um, Benchmade 710, Benchmade 940, ZT made the 350, the... 0562 and on and on the list goes CRKT me the uh, what the Kit Carson M16 so you know Hogue has not come out with that one design that just people are rushing out the door to get yet even though the quality is there um, so let me show you guys what the ships with before I get too much into a ramble here but um, <clears throat> nice little zipper pouch which I think more US manufacturers should be incorporating um, especially with the prices they charge um, this is just the box to the automatic one um, it does come with some lubricant. I've never used this brand before. Um, would be interesting to try. I've used almost everything at this point. So that's what it uh, that's what it comes with. So kudos on you know better packaging than most. Let's take a look at these two and, and then I'll ramble a little bit more. But we have the micro switch. Obviously, it's an automatic. And then we have the micro flip, which is a manual action or a manual flipper with a button lock or a plunge lock as they call it. So this one's done in a worn cliff, this one is done in a drop point. Um, the specs are pretty much the same for both of these. Um, they both have a blade length of just about 2.6 inches. They're both done with aluminum, they both have the same plunge lock, they both have a safety and the same backspacer and the same pocket clip. So you guys can see some of that stuff here. So very similar in a lot of ways. Obviously automatic versus, you know, manual as we'll call it is the difference. Different price points as of the time that I'm filming this video. 144 for the automatic, 127 for the uh, flipper. So uh, they both weigh in at 2.93 ounces, very lightweight. Um, they're both made in the USA. 
and you know the fit and the finish and the quality is very very good so with the auto here the safety you can lock it um, so it can't be opened and then when it's opened you can lock it so it can't be closed you know in theory depends on what you're doing to it um, with the manual you can you cannot lock it closed but once it's open you can lock it open so anyways so let's let's get back to you know Hogan and why I think they're really interesting <clears throat> so again um, they make firearm related gear aftermarket stuff um, they've been around for a long time they have a really good reputation in the firearm industry and they have they're in a lot of different businesses um, you know, gun shops currently carry Hoke products. Uh, you know, probably your REIs and your, um, you know, your outfitter type stores. Can't think of a lot of the names of them right now, but they already carry Hoke products. Or the major distributors to these types of stores already carry Hoke products. So you know, it's it's not uh, it's not unimaginable that you know. Uh, basically, the the sales rep for Hogue, whoever they are, goes out and says, "Hey, you know, you you really liked Hogue products for a long time. Would you like to carry and try out our knives too?" And you know, once they get them in hand, I, I don't really think that would be a hard sale. So the distribution channels, the amount of places they can get these into is, um, I mean, they're really starting off on a right foot. Whereas newer companies, it takes them years and years to get into all those locations to build that traction. Um, to have people coming into the stores and saying, hey, we want you to carry this brand. So, um, you know, I, I think that in terms of who they could rival um, in terms of brand recognition and market saturation, which you guys may not think about a lot, but um, they're really kind of going up against like Benchmade, who has probably the largest brand recognition of all the knife companies. So that's why I find it really fascinating as a company just the potential they can springboard off of once they get those that that one design that people are just you know dying for like again the Benchmade 940 their Benchmade 710 one that really sets them um, kind of sets them up and I don't think they've done that design yet it has not happened yet um, so I mean these are two nice little knives there's a couple things that I like and dislike about them again fit and finish and quality is exceptional um, let's start with this one since I like less things with this one so we've got the micro flip. Nice little blade, uh, CPM 154, done in kind of a, a really bright stone wash. Um, love the blade, comes down to a nice thin edge. It, it's not overly thick stock. Just a nice little user blade. Um, size I think is perfect. It'll be good for anything you need it for. The thing that I really dislike is the jimping behind the flipper tab. Um, I do not like that on any knife, especially one where your finger comes down right on it. So this one, oh, fingers coming down right on that jimping. Uh, to be honest, it is, you guys can see the marks. Uh, it, it's uncomfortable to flip. So, I mean, if you're going to take out your knife once or twice a day, pop this thing open, you know, use it, uh, you'll probably be fine. But if, if you're going to you know, fidget with it or use it multiple times a day if it's coming out your pocket a lot. Um, it's going to be uncomfortable. That's going to really start to hurt after, honestly, just two flips here. My finger is, you know, not in a comfortable spot. And, and the weird thing is, it's so far back on the handle that how are you, like, who's who's going to grip this little knife this far back? I mean, it, it, it has no purpose and no value to me. I mean, if you're going to use a knife like this, you're going to be up here, Maybe you'll be back on the very, you know, this portion of the jimping just at the very top of the frame, maybe. But I, I just can't fathom who's going to be back this far on a little knife. It Maybe if you have tiny hands, but it doesn't make sense. So that needs to go. Um, the jimping behind the flipper tab is a no-go. And that should be an easy change because it is just, it's less milling. That should be easy. Um, as far as the action, it's actually really good. Um, it, it's got a really positive lock up here if you can look and see yeah just a, a really interesting uh, feel to it that I haven't ever experienced in other button locks or other flippers for that matter but it works well so I do like the action overall um, button lock has no stick it's easy to depress you guys can see the smoothness right that was more impressive the first time but you get the point it's actually quite smooth so um, yeah, look at that. I think 
think it runs on bearings, but don't quote me on that. Either way, it's, it's more than adequately smooth. And then the lock, you don't have to use it. It's nice and positive. So, you know, it's not like you're gonna accidentally actuate it. And if you do while a knife's open, who cares? You know, you just, it's not a big deal. It's not life or death. So aluminum handle with obviously a, <clears throat> a hard anodized pocket clip is left and right reversible. Um, interesting backspacer, I believe this is also aluminum. Um, protrudes a tiny bit, although, you know, I don't really know that that would, it's probably not meant for striking, but it's, it's a nice detail. I think it looks nice. Mm, no, it's not sharp. So again, fit and finish, fine. Um, the other thing I don't really love is the pocket clip. As you guys can see, it, it doesn't actually have a lip. Where's a good example? Let's grab this uh, Kershaw Dividend. Obviously that's got a lip to go over the edge of your pocket, get in there. This one does not have a lip, so it's, you know, just less functional. Um, I never had any instance where my pocket was getting caught in here. Um, it just, you know, it doesn't necessarily want to go into the pocket. So uh, this is more attractive than that weird spoon bill clips they're using on their other ones, but uh, not quite there yet. Um, you know, minor qualm, you can probably live or just pull up on it a little bit if you need to, but it is what it is. Show you guys kind of up close. So anyway, so then when we get to the micro switch, um, you know, obviously since it is an automatic and I don't have to worry about bringing my finger back across this jimping, um, you know, this is my preferred between the two, um, simply because of the jimping issue here. So, and again, it's, it's so far back, it really doesn't make sense. Although on an automatic, it might make more sense than on the flipper. Drop point blade, also in CPM 154. A uh, nice little stone wash. Uh, jimping is effective and useful on the blade, definitely. And the first row here is potentially, it, it's useful. It's effective. Is it useful? Maybe. It depends on hand size. So, again, no stick on the button lock or plunge lock, as they call it. Safety is nice and positive. So, gosh, I mean, it's just um, so much potential. That's what excites me about this company. I, I can't wait to see what they do going forward and, and which design finally like catches my eye. Currently they only use one designer which is Alan Lishowitz, a very well-known custom maker. I will be interested to see them work with someone else at some point, um, someone who brings some other design ideas to their lineup. So anyways, yeah, again, um, prefer the micro switch to the micro flip. Um, but this is definitely a company to keep your eye on. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to Zach's video where he does a tour um, of the Hoke facility where they make these knives in the United States. And um, I guess he hitchhike, he does some hitchhiking to get back home to Utah. Um, so that should be a fun video to watch and that's coming up very soon on the Blade HQ channel. Um, but again, keep your eyes on this company so much potential, so much opportunity to, to really get into all the places that, that your average Joe's buy knives. And, you know, honestly, I, if, if one of my friends said, hey, I've got this Hogue knife, I'd say, good for you. Um, really good quality. It's going to last you a very long time. It's going to serve you well. So, um, yeah, that's, that's why I don't necessarily love these two knives, but I'm super excited for what the future holds for this company. So anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Again, links will be in the description box below. You can follow me as Epic Snuggle Bunny on Instagram. And uh, as always, more videos to get done. Take care.